Hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I am Angela, full-time voice actor and audiobook narrator. This channel is dedicated to those that are brand new to voiceover, looking to get into voiceover, or have started in voiceover but need a little bit more help with some of the, the aspects of having your own voiceover business. I have been in business for about uh, three years now and uh, full time for a full year this month. So I am very excited about that. One of the questions that I get a lot is about, you know, audio editing. Because I know in the beginning, it's very difficult to not over edit. Or maybe you get something recorded, but you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. What is all of this stuff? What it, I know I know what a waveform is, but where do I go from here? How do I what's the best way to edit this audio file? So, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So, I'm going to pull up my DAW, which is Adobe Audition, and let's get started. All right. So, here we are with Adobe Audition. And there are two ways to create a new audio file. You can either come up to File and select new, whoops, new, and then roll over to audio file. And let's see, we'll name this one demo. The other way to create an audio file is on your keyboard, select control shift N, and that will enter or open another audio file as well. But since we already have one open, I'm just gonna close this one and work with the one we already have open. Okay, so down here, the most basic things you need to know when recording an audio file is this audio, is this record button. So we're going to hit that and we're going to start uh, recording some waveform here. So I am just going to talk and uh, think of something interesting to say so we can record some audio here. And I also wanted to tell you that while we're doing this, if you make a mistake while you're recording, you can either, let's say that I'm recording an audiobook and uh, the title is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, but I make a mistake and I say, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and I know I made a mistake. So you can either stop the recording, go back to the beginning of your recording and record over it. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And then you can always cut the rest of that off by selecting it and deleting it. Or, let's get this recording again. Or, if you make a boo-boo, I use a dog training clicker that makes a, makes a noise when I click it when I'm in the middle of a narration and I make a boo-boo. I can just go, oh, I made a boo-boo. Then I make a click. And then I will show you that it makes a spike in the waveform that's completely visible so I can see where the mistakes are. So let me show you that. Alice's, Adve Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So as you can see, there are some really noticeable click marks in my audio file that I've just recorded. Now these are really going to help me in post, in post editing or post production to find my mistakes and edit them out. Okay, there we go. We've got enough audio file there. Now here we've got our audio waveform. And before I do anything else, as I'm listening back to my audio file to edit it, I want to hear it as it will sound fairly close to complete. So what I'm gonna do first is add my rack preset, which I have for voiceover. And I did create a video on YouTube about uh, creating and saving your own rack preset. So if you have Adobe Audition, I will put that card up above so you can easily find the video on rack presets. So here we go. I'm going to apply my rack. Okay, great. So our rack has been set. And all it really did was add a little EQ and reduce some of the ambient background noise that was present in the audio file. So what we're going to do now is go through and uh, do some editing. So even after the rack is applied, we can still clearly see where our click marks are. So I know where my mistakes are. 
So what I'm going to do is just listen to this really quick and just make sure that I have, that I'm removing the mistake and not something else before I remove it. So to highlight and remove or delete a section of audio using my cursor, I'm going to click with the left button and to move the playhead to where I want it to go. And then I'm going to hold the left button and drag the cursor over until it highlights the area I want to remove. So from here, you can either right click and then select delete, or you can select your area and then just on your keyboard hit delete. Now I want to be sure that that is actually the mistake that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to listen to it really quick. Alice's advent. Alice's Adventures. Perfect. So we know this is the mistake. So I'm going to remove this mistake and hit delete. And if you ever make a boo-boo with correcting your boo-boos, you can always go up to edit and undo or using your keyboard, control Z. And that'll put it right back or undo the very last thing that you did. Okay, so that is removing. Um, also, if you wanted to remove some of these long pauses between sentences, just ignore this uh, boo-boo mistake clicker right there. So say this is a very long pause in an audiobook or something. We want to reduce this quite a bit. That's a very long pause. So I'm going to do the same thing with my left button. I'm going to move my playhead to where I want it. And you can also drag this around to wherever you want it. And then using the left button on my mouse, I'm going to drag and highlight a lot of this blank space and then just delete it. So, but conversely, if you needed to add some additional pause, you would highlight a selection of room tone and then copy it. And then you can go to wherever you wanna put that. Let's just say I wanted to put more pause here. I can right click and then paste or I can use my keyboard and hit control V and that will also paste. All right, so let's look at the rest of this file here. So here we go. This is a breath. Now these are really, that is a big breath and I don't want that big of a breath in my audio file. So the same thing as the mistakes with the clicker, I would just highlight the breath and then delete it. And if I wanted to add more of a pause here between these sentences, I would just control V and add, now these are recorded. Now these are really, it adds a natural break without having that big kind of dorky breath in there so we can remove that. Oh, and another thing I wanted to mention, when you first start working with your DAW, um, this goes for Adobe Audition, not so much for the others, but when you first open it up, it's gonna look more like this. Just your waveform is going to be visible. I like to use the spectral display because it gives me more of a detailed look at my audio file. Because for me, I have a lot of mouth noise and using the spectral display will allow me to see some of the mouth noise so I can easily get rid of it. Of course, now I don't see any. It's my luck. It's all over the place when I don't want it, but okay, here's some. All right, so if you look at my cursor, right now it's in select mode. But if I bring it down here to the spectral display and choose B on my keyboard, it turns into a little circle. Now what this little circle does, it is my spot healing brush. So if I see some mouth noise right here, actually, let me see if I can find one that's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so these little, little marks here, these are mouth noise. And this one is also a big old mouth noise. So what I'm gonna do is take my spot healing brush and I'm just going to, using the left button on my mouse, I'm going to drag this down. I'm gonna hold down the left button and just drag it. And that will remove that noise. Or another way to get rid of this is with E on your keyboard brings you to the marquee tool. And this will allow you to highlight a section that you want to work on. So once I have this mouth noise highlighted, I can either turn the volume down and most of it goes away 
or I can highlight this section and I can completely delete it, or I can, or I can right click and hit silence. And another way to access these tools is up here. This is your time selection tool. This is your marquee selection tool. And then there's also a lasso and a paintbrush. I don't use either one of these, but they could be used also for cleaning up some of your audio. Most of the time you're going to use the marquee. I would say 95% of the time you could use your spot healing brush. It's the best thing ever. And then the other would be your marquee. And that is for like really tight specific sections of Say like someone has a phone going off or something in the background, you could highlight that phone noise and just that phone noise and then turn down the volume just enough that it doesn't disrupt the rest of the audio, but it removes that noise that kind of rings through it, which is really helpful for like podcasts. That while we're doing this, see, it didn't really disrupt the audio a whole lot, but it could remove whatever the noise was in there. The spot healing brush could do it too, but it's much more effective with the marquee tool. And back to the spot healing brush, this little circle, the brush size, you can adjust right here with the size. You can adjust this, drag this over to, that's, that's a really big spot brush. <laughs> you might end up removing too much, or you can make it a really small brush. It's up to you how big you want this brush to be. I usually keep it at about 20. If I can get back to 20 now, there we go. Perfect. And that seems to work for me because I can always uh, zoom in. And how you do that is just use the roller on your mouse to zoom into the audio to get right to where you want to be to remove a noise or two that shouldn't be there, like this little mouth click right here. I'm just going to remove that. The next thing I wanted to show you was this loop playback. If you ever find yourself in a position where you need to learn listen to one section of the audio over and over, say you're trying to reduce some sibilance or something in a specific section. All you need to do is click this loop playback button. So right now it is on. So if I hit play, you can either, you can either, it'll play that section over and over and only that section over and over. If you turn this off, it'll stop. It will not loop it. You can either, but I usually have this on because when I use that, the only thing I use that for is when you I'm trying. You can either, you can, when I'm trying to listen to a specific sound that I'm trying to remove or reduce a plosive or something of that nature, I use it most often for my podcast editing. Okay, so I'm just going to pretend that this audio file is just the way that I want it. It's all edited. I mean, it looks really rough, but let's just pretend that it's a finished audio file. The last thing I'm going to do is come up to my favorites and hit normalize to negative 3 dB. And that would be my last step. And then, of course, you would come up to file, save as, and then you would save your file to whatever folder that you want and choose whether you want it to be WAV or MP3. Make sure your sample type is what you want it to be and then click OK. And then you can send it off to wherever you want to. So that brings us to the end of this video on an introduction to editing an audio file. I hope that helps answer some of your questions. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. If you have any further questions or comments, please leave them down below. You can always send me an email as well. Come over to my website and check it out. Join the group and have a chat with us. Uh, it's voiceoverangela.com. And subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. This channel is growing so quickly, and I'm so thankful and humbled by everybody that has uh, subscribed and uh, interacts with me and leaves me comments and questions. I really appreciate it. It's very validating for me that, you know, I spend my time to share the information and things that I have learned along my journey. And you guys are great. If you would like to help support my channel, I would appreciate that too. There's a link down below to buy me a coffee. I love this stuff. I would run an IV drip if I could. But until next time, I'll see ya. Bye.